What is up ladies and gents, it's Grim here, hope you're all good. Today we have Storm Peaks, yep. I'm done doing the little ones for a little bit and I thought, you know what, I fancy doing a meaty one. Let's get some raids, let's get some five mans. Storm Peaks fit the bill perfectly. So what do we got on offer in Storm Peaks? Well, we have the Halls of Stone, we have the Halls of Lightning, and we have the Mighty Aldoir. And we're going to kick it off with Halls of Stone. It is located to the north of Storm Peaks. You'll notice on your map, there's a little area that sticks out. It's called Aldoir. The whole of this area is called Aldoir. And it encompasses not only the raid, but also these two five-mans. Now, it is a 76 to 78 on normal. And it is, of course, an 80 on heroic. Is there an easy way to exit? Yes. The very last boss, you end up double backing on yourself. But the very last boss is right by the entrance. Lovely. Dialogue and cutscene. Oh yes, if any of you guys have done Nax and you've done the Harvester, you know you have to wait around killing ads. There is the same principle here. You will talk to good old Bran who's here messing about, and you basically need to protect him while ads come in. You kill them, and once he's done, he will then direct you to the very last door, which is back near the entrance, which will now be open, and you can go through and kill the last boss. But that does mean you are left standing around killing ads which drop nothing for you. So, if you're gold farming, it is a pain. It makes this instance very long compared to what should be very short. So just be aware of that, guys. Is it worth all that weight? Well, the money's not bad. Let's, let's have a look. Halls of Stone, normal. Gold completion, 26 gold on the nose. Raw gold, 7 gold, 12 silver. Gold from greys, 18 gold, 60 silver. Gold from bind on equip. 37 gold, 21 silver. Gold from miscellaneous, a mere 5 silver. Gold from boss drops, 26 gold, 67 silver. Frostweave, we got a mere 6 bits. Runtime, this is the uh, this is the bit. Runtime, 16 minutes, 27 seconds. Yeah, it's a long one. Total gold, 115 gold, 65 silver. Halls of Stone, heroic. Gold completion, as is normal, 29 gold, 60 silver. Raw gold, 7 gold, 57 silver. Gold from Grey, 16 gold, 53 silver. Gold from BOEs, 7 gold, 71 silver. Gold from Miscellaneous, 68 silver. Gold from Boss Drops, 51 gold, 43 silver. Cloth, we got 12 bits this time. Runtime, yeah, we shaved a bit of time off. I hadn't run Halls of Stone in a very long time, and as always, as soon as you know an instance a bit better, you know what you're doing, you can start shaving it down. I reckon you could get it down to about 10 minutes. But with the whole brand having to protect him and wait for the ads, that kind of dictates that I don't think you could do it in under 10 minutes. But you will see, and I think this is the first time this has happened, total gold, 113 gold, 48 silver. Less than we got on normal. And as you can see, that all comes from the fact we just got more greens. We got more bind on equips than we did in heroic. That's the big difference. And especially when the gold completion is very minimal, there's not much difference. It all comes down to luck of the drops. And the RNG gods were with me on the normal, they weren't with me on heroic, and that's the difference. Halls of Lightning is up next. It is a level 79 to 80, so top end on normal, and of course 80 on heroic. Is there an easy exit? Yes, very much so. Uh, some of you will know this, some of you will not. But right behind the boss's throne is a balcony. There is a cracked area on the balcony. This is fully intended. Basically what you can do is drop off the end of his balcony onto the starting platform and you're literally two seconds walk away from the portal to get in or out. So very easy way to exit. Is there any dialogues or cutscene? There is none. There is just tons and tons and tons and tons of ads. Lots of ads. Which is what we like. Because ads equal prizes and gold and loot and all that fun stuff. So, let's have a look at the loot. Is it worth running? Halls of Lightning on normal. Gold from completion, 7 gold, 10 silver. Raw gold, we're looking at 5 gold, 90 silver. Gold from grades, 12 gold, 49 silver. Gold from BOEs, 45 gold, 47 silver. Gold from miscellaneous, 18 silver. Come on, please. Gold from boss drops, 30 gold, 28 silver. Frostweave, we picked up a mere three pieces. Runtime, six minutes, 57 seconds. Again, as I always say, guys, that can be misleading because I haven't run Halls of Lightning in a very long time. So, therefore, didn't really know where I was going, what I was doing. I was stopping, killing mobs rather than getting them into big trash packs to burn down. 
But um, yeah, so total gold for our normal run is 101 gold, 42 silver. Halls of Lightning Heroic, as always, 29 gold, 60 silver. Raw gold, 6 gold, 98 silver. Gold from Greys, 19 gold, 79 silver. Gold from BOEs, again, again, the gods of green drops were not with me on the heroic run. 10 gold, 24 silver. Gold from Miscellaneous, 1 gold, 30 silver. Gold from Boss Drops, 50 gold, 38 silver. Cloth, we got 2 bits. 2 bits, really? Runtime was 5 minutes, 40 seconds. Total gold, 118 gold, 29 silver. And on a personal note, I will say that is a dream of an instance to run. If you just want to go round and round and round, farm it a couple of times, as I say, it's super quick, easy way to exit, tons of trash, which I didn't even kill all the trash. I literally, as always, went from A to B, killed the bosses and killed anything in my way. If you actually want to pull everything, farm the lot, there's still loads of untapped gold in that place. Really nice run. But, but, now we come to the fun part. Oh, yes. Aldwar, run of my favourite raids of all time. I love this place. It's got fucking vehicles, ridiculous amount of ads, it's got fucking monorails in it. It's just, it's massive, it's huge, it takes ages to run. It's just, I love it. I love this instance so much. Really is up there. Probably my top five. And I'm not talking about before people shout me, go, my god, Aldwar was a shit instance, I hated it. I'm talking about from a term of going back and farming it. It's just really fun. I love this instance. Is there an easy way to exit? Very much so. As you kill each boss, there are portals throughout the instance. So when you get to Yogg-Sharon and you kill him, there is literally a portal right outside his room, and it will take you all the way back to the beginning. So you can get to the beginning of the instance from anywhere in the instance, which is fantastic, because there is a lot of stuff you're going to pick up, and it's quite handy sometimes that you kill a boss, you can just go to an instant, you can go to a, sorry, teleport pad, literally teleport back to the instance, or back to the beginning of the instance, mount up if you have your big tundra mammoth, sell a load of gear, and then port straight back to where you were. Absolutely fantastic. Now, before we crack on and I start telling you guys about the gold that's going to drop from this place, just a quick note, okay? There are several points throughout this instance where you can increase the difficulty. So obviously, I always have mine set to Legacy 25 Heroic, okay? Now, there is no Heroic in Aldwar, it's 25 man or it is normal. But, at certain points, you can talk to various NPCs or press certain buttons, and you can make the fight harder for yourself, and therefore by getting more loot or different loot caches or whatever. Now, the most obvious one for this is at the very beginning, you will see an NPC stood in front of you. Okay, if it's the first time you've ever done it, do not click on that NPC thinking he starts it. In fact, Bran Bronzebeard starts it, who is over to your left. You want to talk to him. The guy right in front of you will make the instance harder. He will basically turn on the defense systems for you. It is still not a big deal. If you're level 100, you'll easily complete it. But you'll get more achievements and you get, uh, you get bonus loot. So you can potentially make more money. Also, we'll touch on this again at the items of interest. By doing that, you have a chance to complete more achievements. Uh, the orbital one is the one that immediately comes to mind. And that is required for getting the Aldwar Raider achievement, which will give you a very awesome, awesome mount, which we'll look at in items of interest. But I've held you guys up long enough. Let's get on with what we're actually here for, which is to find out how much money we are going to make from Aldwar. Gold from completion. We don't get it, okay? We know that by now. Raw gold, we're looking at 215 gold, 6 silver. Gold from greys, 38 gold, 34 silver. Gold from BOEs, 63 gold, 44 silver. Gold from miscellaneous, a mere 84 silver. Gold from boss drops, this is what we're talking about. 507 gold, 23 silver. Frostweave, a mere 57 pieces. I'd expect more, but there you go. Runtime, 42 minutes, 57 seconds. You could probably shave some off that, I have no doubt. But this is a big instance. We prepared for that. This is big. There's a lot of going backwards and forwards on it. Total gold, 824 gold, 91 silver. Thank you very much. Now, I don't normally cover this, but the transmogs from here are, in my opinion, some of the best. Uh, particularly if you're a warlock, there's some really nice transmog pieces in here. Again, I don't tend to touch on that because transmog is a very personal thing. What I may like, you may hate. So, but 
In my opinion, I like a lot of Wrath. There are some really cool transmogs to be had for here. But I know what you're thinking. 824 gold and it's going to take me 42 minutes. I can run Naxxramas. You've told me that. I can get 300 plus gold on top of that for running Naxxramas, which is going to take me about the same time. This is crazy talk, Grim. Why would I do it? And that is because, potentially, not only the transmogs, transmogs are cool, but you have the chance of one of the coolest mounts that has ever been, in my opinion, in the history of WoW, and that is this beauty. Yes, it is Mimron's head. It may only have a 1.2% drop chance, but my god, is it sexy. It's just such a, such a cool mount. I love the look of this mount. I really, really do. Uh, it drops off Yogg-Saron if you choose not to use any of the Guardians. What does that mean? Well, quite simply, if you don't talk to any of the Guardians that are in the room that's the Shattered Walkway, then you'll be safe. Don't talk to any of them, just leave them alone, let them stand there and gaze and look at their navels and whatever. And you just go down and kill Yogg-Saron without chatting to any of them, you're fine. You have a chance of getting this awesome mount. Also, and I touched upon it earlier, if you complete the Ordwar Raider achievement, which is easy to do solo, on 25 man, you will get the reins of the awesome, one of my favourite looking proto-drakes, the Iron Bound Proto-Drake. Such a cool looking mount. If you do it on 10 man, You'll get the Rusted Proto Drake, also a very cool looking mount. And as I say, this is really easy to do on solo, really easy to do guys. So two easy to get mounts. Is it any wonder that I love Aldwar so much? <laughs> anyway guys, that's me done, that's Storm Peaks out of the way. As I say, next we'll be cleaning up the last few that we've got remaining and then we're hitting ICC and then we are off to the Cataclysm. Yes. Not looking forward to that. God, I hate Dragon Soul Solo. I really do. Anyway, guys, that's still a little way off. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I will catch you all later. So have a good one.